The history of Cologne's famous cathedral began with a shrine. Adorned with 74 figures made from gilded silver, it contains what's said to be the relics of the three kings, the Magi. In the 12th century, the Holy Roman Emperor gave the relics which had long been kept in Milan to the Archbishop of Cologne. The old cathedral was too small to accommodate the pilgrims flocking to see the relics, so a new one had to be built. It was to be a monumental structure, visible from afar. In the Middle Ages, Christians travelled great distances to visit holy sites. Work began in 1248, and the Gothic cathedral was finally completed in 1880. For a time, it was the world's tallest structure. Cologne Cathedral welcomes everyone, and there's no entry fee. Some 20,000 tourists and pilgrims pass through its doors every day. They come to see the artworks, like the Milan Madonna, or the altarpiece by international Gothic painter Stefan Lochner. The passing of the centuries is reflected in the cathedral's stained glass windows too. They depict everything from biblical stories to artist Gerhard Richter's modern play of colours. The people restoring and maintaining the cathedral will likely never run out of work. Built on the remains of the old cathedral and the ancient Roman city walls, Cologne Cathedral's vaults hold even more treasures in store. They show how rich and powerful the city's archbishops once were. The cityscape of Cologne's old town is also dominated by its 12 Romanesque churches. And the ruins of another church provided the foundations for Columba, the art museum of the Archdiocese of Cologne. Designed by Swiss architect Peter Zumthor, the city's newest art museum is meant to be a place of reflection. Works highlighting various styles and eras from two millennia of Western culture are on display at the Columba. The exhibition spaces invite visitors to take a closer look. The historic City Hall is a testament to Cologne's importance in the Middle Ages when it was one of the busiest trade centres in Europe. In front of City Hall, visitors can see the remains of the Praetorium, the Roman governor's palace, and what later became the Jewish quarter. Cologne suffered extensive damage during World War II. Only a small part of the old town with its streets and buildings dating from the Middle Ages survived. Cologne's Museum Ludwig is known well beyond the city's borders. Named after Irena and Peter Ludwig, who endowed their extensive collection to the city, the museum is a treasure trove of 20th century and contemporary art. Here, visitors can see everything from expressionist sculpture to pop art. The Museum Ludwig's collection of pop art is the largest one outside of the US. All the icons of this art movement, which enjoyed its heyday in the 1960s, are on display here. Cologne also remembers history others would prefer to forget. This is a memorial to homosexuals persecuted and killed by the Nazis. Cologne rivals Berlin as one of the most tolerant and welcoming cities in Germany for gays and lesbians. They flock to the area around Rudolfplatz Square with its trendy cafes and restaurants. One of them is Brennerei Weiss, an old brewery that makes Cologne's famous Kölsch beer. For nightlife, head to the Belgian Quarter. 
Cologne's young and hip meet at Brüsseler Platz in bars like the Hallmachen Reuter. Whether you're here for a day or for a lifetime, Cologne boasts enough variety to make everyone feel at home.